Hello everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a loading screen. So if we hit play here, you can see we spawn in, our loading screen loads the assets that we have in our game, the bar fills up, and when the bar gets completed, the UI fades away and we are able to play our game. So in today's video, that's what I'm going to be showing you guys how to make. Alright, so to start off the video, uh, first things first. I do have a UI already pre-made. This will be linked in the description. The whole model with all of the finished code will be linked in the description for your guys' taking. Use it, use it however you like. But if you want to make your own, I suggest following this little um, bit right here where I'm going to show you guys how I set up the actual UI. So the, I have a screen UI called loading screen. I have a main, which is like the main holder. It holds everything. Uh, then I have a couple stuff in the main. So. First things first, I have the name of game, which has a UI stroke on it. This will come in handy uh, when we are making everything fade away. There is a holder, which is the bar holder right here. And inside the holder, there is an actual bar that fills up. So if I go hold up, if I go ahead and make this one, you could see that is the bar that fills up the whole thing. So again, like I said, in the holder, there is a UI stroke. Keep this in mind when we are coding in a little bit because I do um, change these in the code so bar that fills up a text label called assets loaded which just says loading assets and then the amount of assets that is loaded and that's really it there's a UI gradient in here but that doesn't really matter like a UI gradient in the bar but uh, that's pretty much it anything else you guys can decorate um, you know frames whatever you want you could put all around here so now let's actually get to coding so first things first, we are going to insert a local script inside of the loading screen. And we are going to name this uh, script handler, just like that. And basically this will just like, you know, control all of the actual UI. So we'll delete print hello world and we are going to de define some variables first. So the first thing we're going to define is replicated first. not storage next thing we're going to define is the content provider then we're going to do the tween service and then we will do the actual player then let's define the actual um UIs and stuff like that. So we'll do local main equals script dot parent colon child main. Then we will do um, let's define the holder. We'll say local holder equals main colon wait for child holder. And then we will get the actual assets in the game. And to do this, we're going to say local assets equals game colon get descendants just like that. So that's getting every single thing in the game. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually make it so we're, we load the bar, load the uh, load the assets in. So to do this, we're going to say for i equals one comma number of assets to. So what this is, we're going through every single asset in the game and we're going to load them and change the UI depending on, you know, how many what assets we're loading. So we'll say local, we'll get the individual asset. So to do this, we'll say local asset equals assets. Uh, square brackets I then we will get the percentage so we'll say to do this we'll say local percentage equals um, math dot round um, I comma I mean not comma uh, backslash assets times 100 so that's getting the percentage that we are completed so like 1% 2% 3% however much completed we are of loading all the assets. And then we're going to say content provider colon preload a sync uh, squiggly brackets and then asset, not assets, asset. So we're getting the actual asset. And one other thing I forgot up here before assets type replicated first colon remove default loading screen. So what this will do is when you load into a game, you can see like that loading screen that loads. We want to remove that default loading screen because we already have our, we're making our own, right? So 
we're going to remove that default loading screen. So the next thing we should do is let's actually make it so that text label shows how much assets we are um, going through. So to do this, we're going to say holder, which was here, which um, holds the assets loaded text label holder dot assets loaded dot text equals loading assets. And what did we have? We had a space. Yeah, we had a space like that. Then we're going to say dot dot um, dot dot I dot dot backslash dot dot number of assets. And then we'll end it with a parentheses. So now um, we won't test it. We won't test it out yet because we need to do one other thing. So then what we need to do is we're going to we're going to try to like we're going to we're going to make it longer a little bit so that players can actually see it load. So to do this, we're going to say if percent, I mean, not percent, I percent five equal equals zero. Then so for each fifth percentage, we're going to do this. We're just going to throw in a weight Then we're going to enter, enter. If I equals number of assets do, I mean, not if. If I equal equals number of assets, then we're going to just throw in a wait one. So basically when the, when the loading is finished, we're, we'll wait one and then we'll fade away everything. This could be whatever you want. If you want it to wait five after the loading's done, change that to five. If you just want it to wait at none at all, just change it. Just put a wait in here. No, no number, or anything, but we'll, we'll put, uh, we'll put one. So now if we hit play, we should see this little text label go up in the amount of assets loaded. Um, and it's not working. Oh, I know why. So we didn't put a, we didn't put a hashtag right here. Put a hashtag before that one. Not I divided by assets. I divided by number of assets. And now if you could see, uh, it shows the whole number of assets we have in the game and then the amount of assets that is loaded But we want this bar to fill up as well. So we're gonna do that right now So to do this We define tween service up here, which is what we're gonna be needing to use so we're gonna say tween service colon create um, Holder dot bar Tween info dot new 0 0.2 or this could be whatever you want. Actually, I'm gonna set this to 0 0.1 enum dot easing style dot quint and then we're gonna set the easing direction dot out. So basically, um, this is the amount of time it takes for the bar to go up, like in between each tween. This is just like that. You could set there's a bunch of different things you could choose here. You could choose bounce, quint. There's a bunch of different like styles of, of, of easing that you could choose from. Play around with that if you want. See which one you like the best. Then we're going to do comma after this parenthesis. Squiggly brackets. Size. So we're getting the bars size. Equals UI. I mean UDIM2 dot from scale. Uh, we're going to use that percentage. We're going to say percentage divided by 100 comma 1. And then at the end here, we're just going to throw in a uh, colon play. So we're going to play the animation. So if we hit play now, if everything works properly, you could see the bar should load up just like that. But there's nothing that happens when we actually finish loading. We need to actually make it so that the UI fades away and the player can actually play the game. So that's what we're going to do um, right now. So this part is where it gets a little bit confusing because there's a lot of stuff here that gets like, I don't know, messy, but uh, just try to follow along the best of your ability. So first things first, we're going to say local out TI equals tween info dot new. Um, actually, no, we'll do one. And basically what this is going to be used for is this is going to be used for, um, how long we want each how long we want it to to the ui to fade away so if you set that one to like five it would take five seconds for the ui to fade away if you set it to one it'll take one second so change that to whatever you want the ui to fade away at like the time so the next thing we're going to say is we're going to say 
tween service colon create main which is our main holder that holds everything comma out ti comma squiggly brackets background transparency equals one colon play so that'll fade out the main the background but we need to fade out everything else so to do this we're gonna basically get everything all at once so to do this we'll say for i comma ui in pairs main colon get children do so we're first getting everything in under that main which is holder and name of game so we'll say if ui dot class name equal equals um frame then else if ui dot class name equal equals texts label then just like that then we're going to enter on this end and we're going to say if ui colon find first child which is a ui stroke then in both of these there is a ui stroke so that's why i'm saying if we find that then we're going to fade it away so we'll say if ui colon find first child which is a ui stroke then between service colon create we can copy this put it right there or actually you know what we'll make it simpler we'll just say local stroke equals that and then we'll say stroke comma uh, out ti comma squiggly brackets transparency equals one colon play because in these strokes there is a property called transparency we'll set it to one to fade it away so the next thing we need to do is we need to actually make the ui fade away not just the ui stroke so to do this we'll say um let's do the text label first so to do this we'll say we, we can copy that we can put ui right there but uh text labels are a little bit different than frames and ui strokes they have a thing called text transparency not just transparency so we will set the text transparency to one and uh, if we hit play, this is not gonna this is not gonna fade everything out, but I just want to show you that stuff is fading out now. So if we hit play, and it loads up the assets. You could see that I think this should fade away, the background should fade away, and nothing here should fade away. So yeah, but as you can see, this is left behind. So we need to fade that away now. So, um, to do this, we are going to go in this little if UI dot class name equal equals frame then. We're going to go into that little thing right there. And we will say um, tween service colon create UI. So we'll first fade away that the actual UI. It, I know it, it, it sounds confusing, but this UI is referring to this frame right here, this holder. So every time I refer to UI, it's referring to this or this. So this one, because it's a frame, it's going to refer to the holder. So we'll fade out the holder. So we'll then we'll, we'll put in the LTI and then we'll do squiggly brackets, background, transparency equals one, colon play. Then we will do the bar. So we'll say UI dot bar. Oops, squiggly brackets, background, transparency equals one, colon play, and then we will do that final um, assets loaded text. So we'll say colon create UI dot assets loaded, squiggly uh, text transparency equals one, colon play. So now with all of that done, if we go ahead and hit play, you can now see that when we load in, when it finishes loading. So right here, the bar gets completed. Everything fades away and we are now able to play our game. So that is how you make a simple loading screen that actually loads in assets from your game in Roblox Studio. If you guys have any questions, comments concerns leave them in the comments below that's pretty much it for today's video if you guys enjoyed the video please like comment subscribe all that good stuff i have a discord server link will be in the description i answer all questions or i try to answer all questions relating to development stuff or just in general in that discord server i definitely respond to that more than comments so 
definitely check out that uh, server. And yep, that's it for today's video. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.